All right, I want to move on now to an issue that, it, particularly um, during COVID, the time of COVID, uh, has affected me. Um, a new Deloitte's report, commissioned uh, by the international fitness industry, into the cost of in, uh, inactivity shows that lost production caused by physical inactivity costs the New Zealand economy, get this, brace yourself, $2.3 billion a year. It costs the New Zealand health system $530 million a year, $440 million of which is borne uh, by the public health system and picked up by us, uh, the good old taxpayers. And while New Zealand is often seen as a sport-loving country, it appears we are not... We are not an active uh, country. Um, and our next guest uh, is Exercise New Zealand CEO, Richard Betty. And he says, I think he's, you're basically saying, Richard, and welcome to the program, Richard. Good day. Good uh, morning. Uh, I think you're basically saying we're kidding, we're kidding ourselves if we think we're all healthy and fit and active and doing what we could to take care of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think part of the challenge is in New Zealand, we think of ourselves as a sporting nation. Yeah. And I think the, the way I'd paraphrase it is we're a sport watching nation. And, uh, you know, that whether it be the All Blacks or whether it be America's Cup, we love to watch it. But fundamentally, sport is not the answer to the, to the problem of inactivity. It's, it's part of it. But the problem is because we fixate over sport and not enough about physical activity, we're actually missing the opportunity here. And watching someone running a marathon doesn't mean you're running the marathon, does it? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, most of the uh, evidence around Olympics and a lot of the, the argument for hosting Olympics is, oh, that'll help activities within the sport or the, or the, the host country. Uh, and what we generally see is that it spikes immediately after an Olympics and then it goes back down to normal within two to three years. And so, again, sport, I'm not, not bashing sport, but sport is not the solution to this. It's, it's part of the solution. But the problem with for the fixation with sport is that it actually excludes a bunch of people so that if you're not a competitive person, particularly a child, and we have the worst statistics in the world for children, 93% not getting enough physical activity. And, you know, there we're talking about play. Yeah, but, but hang on, Richard. We have also gym. got one of the highest yeah. participation rates for childhood sport in the country. And I know international people come in yeah, and said they yep. cannot believe it on a Saturday morning. Poor bloody parents yep. being dragged out and on cold sidelines and watching their kids be useless at sport. That's a, that's a New Zealand tradition. Yep, so this is the classic example of um, saying, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like saying you have high income levels, but you've got lots of poverty because it's haves and have nots. So you're quite right, we have really good uh, sport uh, for some children, but the problem is, and in fact, quite high globally, um, but the problem is that it doesn't translate into a high overall physical activity. So again, if you look at the, the kids that are playing sport, you're talking about high socioeconomic schools, you're talking about generally white middle class parents, and again, these are huge generalisations, but when you start look at the statistics, they're all driven in the most part around uh, income and uh, socio depri deprivation, not around actually just access access to a park or, or a place to play. And the fact is that sport is not exercise. And the thing we don't see when we see the All Blacks play or any sport professional sport team is the hours and hours of physical training and exercise that they undergo to be match fit, to look that good on a sports Absolutely. field. There's a hell of a lot behind that that we don't see. Yeah, exactly. And funnily enough, if, if you were to call going to the gym a sport, which I realise it's not, but yeah. for the sake of argument, let's call it a sport, it's actually bigger than rugby, cricket and netball combined in New Zealand. So it's actually one of the biggest physical activity providers, but because it doesn't win gold medals, it gets ignored. And not that gym is the solution to everything in the same way that sport isn't the solution, but it's a really big part of it and it needs to be structured activity, and I'll, I'll call it in a, in a kind of big, broader context, not just going to the gym, is a major part of the solution because we know whether it's adults or children often they need support to get active and keep active and whether that's going to the gym or a yoga class or or down at the community hall doing a, a class because you've got Parkinson's and it's a Parkinson's mm. class there's all that kind of activity around but it just doesn't get the attention because it doesn't win gold medals and that's where we need to focus all right um look I'm just going to talk from personal experience here I was gymming very regularly two three times a week before COVID. COVID came along, the gym yeah. was closed, then the sauna was closed, then sometimes the sauna was open. I really got out of the habit and, and I felt it. I felt it in my yeah. physical well-being and I know I have to get back into it. 
Um, and these things are habits, and they take. And I think it takes two months um, for me anyway to get back into a groove of regular exercise. Has COVID, do you think, disrupted the physical activity of people? It has actually. The, um, some, a really interesting report by Sport New Zealand is that we dropped around twenty percent because of COVID. And you're quite right; it breaks habits. Um, and the, the the you've actually hit the nail on the head when you talk about it. You go, you feel different. Um, mm. you know, your body probably hasn't actually changed a huge amount in a relatively short time, but you feel different. Anyone who's physically active, they know how they feel when mm. they don't go to the gym. Um, I'm currently overseas, and I haven't been to the gym for about a week, and I'm beginning to kind of get those aches and pains yeah. in a bad way that I haven't been moving as much as I should be. Um, again, because I regularly I, I'm active, and again, I will go back to that once I get back to New Zealand. But COVID really slammed people because, particularly with Auckland, because of the lockdowns and the multiple lockdowns, but all around the country. We as you say, whether it be the saunas closed or just my local activity had the day changed and as a result I'm working from home more, all those kind of things that all Kiwis uh, sort of had to put up with. And what the key is, is about looking at, for those that were exercising, how we get them back to exercise, but actually the broader question of how do we get the 80% that don't do much at all actually into some sort of support structured activity. It could be going to the gym. It could be joining a local sports club. It could be cycling to work. These are all good forms of physical activity. There is no doubt, right, that a fitter populace, people who are more physically active, drain yes, less from the health system. They use our health. They, they save us money, yes. essentially. Is there any Absolutely. way at present or any way potentially that we could share with the person who wants to be active and healthy, you give them a subsidy? for the cost of doing that because they are saving the rest of us money down the road. Yeah, look, I think this is the, exactly the sort of the opposite of the sugar tax where, uh, or even if we talk about smoking, you know, smoking is highly taxed because of the health burden. Uh, I won't get into the sugar tax because that's probably a different category. But when we're talking about physical activity, it has lots of positive benefits to not only the individual, but as you say, to society, because we end up paying as taxpayers the cost of people being inactive. And so you're quite right. What we do need to do is though is target it because the problem with simply saying, if you're active, we're going to subsidise it. That would, if we just did it on day one, probably help a bunch of people that are already active. Oh, thanks very much for the subsidy, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. change my behaviour. What we're trying to do is target that. And so what we want to do is come up with a number of initiatives for the government to say, here's the actual numbers how we can invest amount of money in certain populations in certain areas and here's your payback and we're talking about under 12 months and that's almost unheard of in the health system you do not get a 12 month payback but this is what we're talking about if we invested two and a half thousand dollars your payback is 12 months yeah. so that's phenomenal over the over a 10-year period the government alone gets twelve and a half thousand and the rest of society gets an, uh, over double that because obviously we lost gdp lost productivity all that yeah. kind of stuff now whenever anyone starts Talking to me about spending taxpayers' dollars, Richard, I always want to be completely yeah. sure where they're coming from. Exercise New Zealand, yeah, sure. the organisation that you're the CEO of, how is that constituted? Who does it represent? Sure. So we are a non-profit body. Our mission is to get more Kiwis physically active. We say through exercise, and by that we mean structured physical activity. Uh, we are not government funded, so we're able to criticise uh, any government party, and we'd probably criticise both of them pretty yeah, equally. You're, you're a non-profit body. Do you, re do you represent an industry or people in an industry? Yeah, so we, um, we're we funded primarily through the exercise industry, so uh, okay. providers of exercise. Okay, so don't, what I'm saying, Richard, and, is don't, and dress, don't dress it up, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. You are funded no, no, in a lobby yeah, group yeah. for the exercise industry. No, that's not, not our mission is not to be a lobby group. We happen to advocate for exercise, but that's not our mission. Our mission is not lobbying. Our okay. mission is increasing physical activity. All Just right. so our members are those that provide it, and that's how we, mm. that's how we exist in the same way that You'd say National Heart Foundation is not a lobby group mm. for, for heart health, but obviously it advocates for it. Okay. How have your members found COVID and the lockdown? Because some would say a lot of people actually have exercised more. Or that's become their only place they can exercise. I know lockdown rules were bloody hard for gyms and I could have throttled yeah. uh, the Wellington City Council for shutting down my sauna on and off and on and off again uh, and all sorts of strange rules, so much so I've given up on that gym. Um, but what impact and how does the industry that funds you but does not control you, uh, how does it yeah. look to change or how can it change New Zealanders 
uh, activities or, or behaviours for the better? Well, part of the challenge with COVID, and we all realised that, you know, the first lockdown kind of everyone was in it together because basically everything was closed. But part of the problem with some of the later lockdowns, and particularly when Auckland was closed for a period and they were reopening certain activities, including bars and restaurants, but not gyms, is was that we weren't considered part of the healthcare continuum. And if you look at all the evidence and all the science, and I'm going to sort of pick on, uh, I can't mention a name, but there are top epidemiologists who can consider themselves public health professionals who don't seem to understand public health because all they focus on is COVID rather than the broader picture. Because when you take uh, away people's I know who you're talking activity, about, and we you, won't say Susie Wiles. Yeah, but I didn't mention a name. But we've had yeah. another guy called Des Gorman on, uh, emeritus yep. professor of health, who has said exactly what you're saying, that when we look at our health system, a systemic change from DHBs to a more centralised system isn't going to do anything if it doesn't change the number of people who get ill, and he talked about primary health and he talked about going deeper. And I suspect this is part about uh, of what um, Des was talking about, looking at health way, way back before you get sick. What stops you getting sick? What makes you healthier rather than sicker? And it would seem to me that exercise is a huge part of that equation. Absolutely. If it was an if it was a pill, it would be the most prescribed pill in the world. It can literally. If I rattle off the benefits, it is just that's unheard of. Everything from heart disease to to cancer. Um, if you're talking about the other end of the spectrum, when you, as we get older, uh, all the degenerative diseases from Alzheimer's, which basically will get everyone in the end if you if you if you live long enough. All of them are helped by exercise. In fact, some conditions, such as Parkinson's, there's not a drug that will actually help with the condition. It can help with the symptoms, doesn't help with the conditions. Exercise is proven to help with the condition. So diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes, we can cure. We just need to get people active enough. And this is, this. I mean, type 2 diabetes alone is Well, that's alone so funny you mention that. I have goals. type 2 diabetes uh, and I suffer from symptoms and, and I know how to control them. Right. And the one thing, the one thing that makes all my symptoms better and in some times negates them completely is exercise that is the one thing absolutely um, and, and, yeah yeah um, and, and this is the example your example is a great one and but then we've got you know hundreds of thousands and the the problem with it because we have a public health system when someone is not active uh, there's a, there is a cost to them. They're not as as, mm. as healthy. They don't feel as good. All the mental health benefits, but the cost is borne by the taxpayer. So there's a, that's why the government needs to be involved. It's not just about saying government knows best. It's about government can save money for itself. This 2.3 billion is a huge waste of resource in New Zealand. And what we're saying is that if we invest a small amount of money, we can save not only the taxpayer and the government. But society as a whole. So this is a this is a really good argument for why doing the right thing actually helps us all, not just about saying, well, I think we should do it because it's a good idea. It's actually backed, and that's what the Deloitte report really says. It's got some really good facts and figures. The whole report's 400 pages long if anyone wants to read it, but yeah. it's really backed by good science and good data. Oh, I don't know if I'd be able to lift it in my current state. Um, yeah, <laughs> that could be your workout for the day. All right, let's get down to practical. Let's get down to the human human thing. Um, I am literally today, and I've got it down on the diary, I'm going to join a new gym just down the road because I'm at a new office. I've checked it out. It looks good. In fact, I want to do a deal with them to, for some advertising so all the staff can join it because I think that would be good for them. But as individuals, Great. as individuals, let's take an, let's take an average platform listener. Uh, let's take a 45-year-old male in an office job. Um Firstly, how much exercise should someone in that cohort be getting or be doing a week? So all of the guidelines that WHO uses that the Deloitte report compares against and all of the medical research, whenever they do it, is one statistic, um, which is 30 minutes five times a week. So that's 150 minutes, so two and a mm -hmm. half hours. And that can be in little chunks or in big chunks. So the yeah. gym goer goes to the gym, you know, two and a half times. There's your, there's your numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the person who's not going to the gym or cycling to work, it can be 15 minutes either way kind of stuff. But the other thing which often is missed with the WHO guidelines is there's an or in this statement, and it's or 75 minutes of intense activity. 
So that's only an hour and a bit a week if it's intense, and that means at that high level. So I'm not recommending everyone goes to the intense end, but for those that are exercising regularly and might do an intense workout, it's actually not as much as people think because, you know, two and a half hours, some people go, I don't have the time, although I'd probably challenge that one. But if we're talking about options, you can either do 30 minutes five times a week or cut that up however you like, or 75 minutes, one and a bit hours a week of intensity. Okay. All right. There's hope for us all yet. Um, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, look, if people want to read this report or read more about it and your work, where can they go? So if they go exercisenz.org.nz is our website, we yeah. are going to be putting out a whole series of follow-ups on this. And particularly we're going to you know, want to talk to the government about this. And it's not about blaming the government. It's simply saying we want to work with you. We have solutions and, and we, we don't want to subsidise it for everyone. What we want to do is target this. But actually we can save people money. This is We know at the moment the government has a major problem that there is too much need and not enough money and not just in the health system, education, justice, mm. you name it. Well, how about we can be part of the, the, prob, uh, the solution rather than the problem here? Good on you, Richard. Stay in touch, mate, and thank you very much indeed. Uh, for your time this morning. That's the CEO of Exercise New Zealand, Richard uh, Betty. Yes, I have been a bit of a LA lard ass in the last six months. That has to change. I'm quite busy during the day, though, aren't I? <laughs> Apart from my naps. Pull. What, going up on the lift? <laughs> Go up and down the lift for my cigarettes. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, all right, are you a lard ass? Do you want to get back to the gym? Do you think you need to get back to the gym? I know I do.